Welcome back, everyone. I am joined once again with a friend of the channel, Kyle Langer from the Definitive Foundation. We're going to talk about the important things that have been happening in the internet computer ecosystem. There is a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about Cambodia. We're going to talk about what is going on. Cycle burn rates is ICP becoming deflationary again. We're going to talk about a integration with a Cosmos native DEX and what that means for interoperability, not just for ICP, but for the entire crypto space. And, you know, we take a look at what has ICP done as far as price. And we take a look. It is up over the last seven days, 20%. The last time ICP had a rally this hard, something was happening. And so that is what I want to ask you, Kyle. I see the price rallying. My first question is, okay, what is going on? What is happening? We know how the internet computer tokenomics work as more cycles are burnt. As more usage on the network, the token becomes deflationary. And of course, if the demand is there, price goes up. So what has been happening? I want to start here with uh, this piece of news that dropped. Uh, earlier this week, Definity Foundation and the Cambodia Ministry of Industry, Science and Technology and Innovation signed an LOI, a letter of intent to support smart city innovation. Exciting times ahead for Cambodia's digital transformation. And I do want to read this quote here that was in the Cointelegraph article. Uh, this is from uh, Dominic Williams. We are excited and proud to progress our partnership with the forward-thinking government of Cambodia. The internet computer and ICP technology generally will play a key role supporting Cambodia's digital transformation. And this will assist Cambodia in its mission to develop smart cities. Also here, uh, it'll explore partnership applications uh, of the ICP tech stack for a smart city infrastructure, artificial intelligence, and sovereign cloud tech, marking a major step in Cambodia's digital transformation. How did this even happen? Uh, and and what does it mean to, to essentially onboard an entire co country's government into your ecosystem? Yeah, appreciate us having me on. Um, yeah, thanks. For so in terms of... Uh, in, ter <laughs> the, uh, in terms of how it happens, um, I mean, this is really a sign of like camp the innovation that camp is coming out of Cambodia. Uh, innovation happens at a local level. As much as we love the internet being global, uh, the inter you know innovation does tend to happen at the local level. That's why you see Silicon Valley has dominated in innovation for uh, decades. Um, but here's uh, Southeast Asia, who's really I mean, if you're in the crypto space, you probably know Southeast Asia is really where a lot of the activity is is happening. Um, a lot of uh, the population is hungry and, and and really looking, putting in effort to build really cool apps. So I just love seeing Cambodia as a country. If you remember five, six months ago, the UN Development Pro uh, Program yeah. um, launched a, uh, a trusted credentials program using ICP. I think Cambodia was a major player in that as well. So this is just another step for them. Um, bringing innovation in country and, and supporting, in this case, AI and smart cities. Do you think? Um, do you think that region, Kyle, will be the initial adopters of blockchain technology on like a government level? Like, because you know, you travel the world, you go to a lot of events, and so, like, well, what are you feeling? What are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, whether. So, I guess you could define this in a couple ways. You could say El Salvador has already adopted blockchain because of their adoption of Bitcoin as a um, legal ten, uh, legal uh, tender. Um, but I mean, whether or not, like, it just depends on what you define as adoption. But I, I think the uh, um, the trend is clear. Is you know, you're seeing blockchain as a as a technology has worked its way up from being you know at the individual consumer you know little the what what you might call web3 it's now um infiltrating enterprises and then now you see these uh forward thinking countries who are really starting to learn what the technology can do for them for their people and and how uh it really is the next wave of innovation for the next decade and they want to be on the front end of that wave not on the tail end yeah i wish the us would think like that as well you know, Kyle, um, there's a lot of uh, projects that talk about, well, we want to onboard a billion users, but like they have trouble when they get a frenzy of, I don't know, meme coin trading or you name it. So when you talk about an entire government potentially leveraging your infrastructure to run whatever, sovereign cloud, AI, is this something with, with the internet computer technology that can be scalable Maybe next year you add another two, three governments or countries, and then the following year another three to four to five. At what point, the, like, or is there any point where you guys would have to say, 
yeah, we're kind of at the brim of, of what we can do um, and what we can host. Yeah, I mean, the design of ICP back in, you know, when it was first conceived back in 2016 has always been um, scalability. Uh, and, and infinite, what we've always said is infinite scalability. And the, we, and the way we do that is you can just add more and more subnets across uh, the network. Um, so in terms of will we ever reach a max to that scalability? Um, I mean, there's certain limitations in terms of there's only so much hardware that exists in the world, right. that kind of stuff. But um, I don't, I, as, a, as, a, as a core principle of, of ours is, you know, we, we don't want to hit that maximum. We want the whole world to be, you know, we want all software to run on the internet computer that requires levels of scalability that are like unheard of in, in our industry. Amazing. Uh, I'm excited to see where this thing goes. Um, uh, this is just a lot of exciting things uh, happening in the ecosystem. That's why we, you know, part of the reason why we started covering the project a little more, we're like, there's so many cool things happening. Why is no one really talking about it, right? You search the news and you, you know, you go through these news aggregators and you barely see any articles. It kind of reminds me of what kind of happened to Cardano back in 2021. And uh, for me, you know, um, ICP, you, t you look at what they're doing and the team behind it, uh, I, I think it's, um, I think it definitely needs more coverage, which is why we do videos like this, which is why we bring you on, Kyle. So thank you again. Kyle, I want to pivot to uh, the big event in Singapore. Unfortunately, we were not there, but we know Definity was there. A couple of posts I want to share here on from X, from the Definity uh, handle. The vibes at Token 2049 were immaculate from exploring the potential of chain fusion across ecosystems to uncovering exciting opportunities for builders and founders. The vision of a unified Web3 was on full display. Also, this is from Highlights from AI 2049, uh, chain reaction, the premier AI event during Token 2049. Dominic and Michael Turpin shared unparalleled insights into the future of AI and blockchain. ICP is the fastest growing AI ecosystem with projects like Decide AI and Kinnick App showcasing their dApps with 60 plus projects under development. Um, can we get an update on, on AI and ICP? We know, you know, I see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of comments on our posts and page about, you know, Arweave and what they're doing with the AO supercomputer talking about how they're actually running like large language models. And, you know, someone made a comment about, oh, well, ICP at this point is only being able to run like image generation. Where are we at with that? Is that false? Is that true? And and what are you most excited about with AI moving forward over the next, let's say, 12 to 18 months? Yeah, I mean, in terms of image classification, that's that's just the very beginning. Um, we have I, and this is so that's Definity has um, demoed image classification and facial recognition fully on chain. Yeah. Um, and that's a key component. There. There's there's no Web2 part of uh, of either of those demos. Um, but honestly, the developer community has taken it even further. Um, I know one developer has an eight billion parameter Llama three model running on the Internet computer fully on chain. You know, no Web2 components. So eight billion parameters is when you start to get into um, pretty much close to like what a chat GPT three was. So, you know, it's it's quickly catching up to Web2 counterparts. Um, we still have a lot to go in terms of performance and cost. Uh, but uh, the the scope of what is possible from an AI agent or an AI, you know, LLM or AI model um, perspective is uh a lot like you can do a lot of really really cool things you're seeing that with decide ai um who's been leading like basically like proof of personhood using ai um on chain you see it with nick or elna that are creating platforms for people to launch agents and um and store data in a vector database um and then you go across um that tweet reference 60 plus um um applications you're starting to see people go beyond what like um introducing AI in very interesting ways. There was, um, there's been a whole bunch of like, whether it's like chess or gambling or other uh, ver verticals, like you're starting to see people incorporate AI into it. Um, and then I think the next step that uh, I would predict is going to happen is you're going to start when you combine AI with our chain fusion technologies, you're going to start seeing like applications on Ethereum or Solana, um, you know, Cardano. Uh, actually, when we were out in uh, Vegas, I talked with a lot of Cardano developers who were like, ooh, actually, I would love to get an AI component uh, without having to switch off of Cardano. I can keep my app on Cardano, build an AI component on Internet Computer, and the two of those can talk back and forth. 
Um, and so I think we're going to start to see a lot of cool things like that. Well, what, what would be like the the benefit of that or like in practical terms? Is there like a um, example you can give maybe to the average person who who's kind of trying to put two and two together? Like, OK, well, how does that help either the, the person creating the DAP or the chain that it's launching on? And what does that even look like? Yeah, so you can imagine, so like Decide AI is a great one where proof of personhood, so if you want to do like airdrops to real people and not bots, um, that would be, I mean, that's that's beneficial across, uh, across all ecosystems. Um, but also if, if an AI agent can sign transactions on other blockchains, let's say like Cardano, um, at that point you could have AI agents that are executing meme coin trades um, on Cardano or, you know, basically, you know, trading meme coins across uh, either with each other or with other other um, other people. Um, you could also then have a, like a, like any kind of AI, uh, you know, let's say like an LLM where you're interacting in, with it. And instead of you actually, um, you know, where you're, you know, you're chatting with it, you're saying, you know, where do I want to go on vacation? Uh, and then you say, you know what? Yeah, let's book this. Here's, you know, uh, 15,000 ADA to pay for it. And it actually executes those transactions for you. So you don't even have to open up a wallet and send things like that. So you can imagine like a, an AI agent as your wallet instead of uh, you manually having to do it. There's probably, and th these are just yeah. file ideas um, that are always possible. What's really interesting is when um, innovative people, way more innovative than me, um, start thinking of these things and they're like, wait, actually, this is going to be a cool idea. And so I, it'll be interesting to see what people play out. I feel like there's going to be a lot of like things that people didn't expect was even reality or in the realm of possibilities uh, over the next five years. Uh, and so it's, it's a little scary, right? You see, you see the movie Terminator, but it's also very exciting, right? I think people are always, you know, as people start to their, their, you know, inflation goes up, it draws their money down. They go find new jobs. They're so busy. Mom and dad are both working, raising kids. The more people can make it convenient and automate things, I think people are going to go for that. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see over the next few years um, what AI looks like in our everyday lives. Um, yeah, It's almost certain that you're going to want AI agents that can transact on your behalf. So you could think about, again, in that example of book a vacation, right? You chat you chat with ChatGPT and you, you design what your vacation is going to look like based off whatever criteria. And at the end of it, you want to say, yeah, let's just book this. Like buy me those tickets book that hotel. I don't want to have to go to different websites to do that. That's a very easy, like, yeah, that's definitely going to happen. And it's almost certainly going to happen on crypto rails, not um, credit card payments, because an AI is going to want instant finality or yeah. near instant finality. So we can move on to the next task. Um, the other example, though, where you get into like Internet of Things. So if you think of like two smart driving cars, you could easily imagine they're a microtransaction of one car. They come up to an intersection and and one car wants to go first because it's passengers in a hurry. It may want to say, hey, I'm going to pay you five cents if I can hit this intersection quicker than you. Um, I don't know. Those, like, those kind of things of two AIs uh, making a decision and then using a financial transaction to facilitate that decision. Um, and those are definitely going to happen on crypto reels. I think that's, that's just that's, that's the easiest bet I would ever make in my life. I, I agree. You know, I, all I could think about when you said that, Kyle, was, you know, like two cars pulling up next to each other and then they're like betting each other's pink slips on who's going to win a race. <laughs> settles. Um, but again, man, it's just a lot of exciting things. So um, we saw with Bob.fun what that did to the tokenomics and the cycle burn rate and the inflation rate and everything on 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 internet computer which elevated the price, which is what you're supposed to see, right? Of course, there's going to be speculation, but it's like, okay, I made upgrades to my car. Maybe that's not the best analogy, and it goes faster. I know why. And so I want to share this post here from Token Terminal. Uh, Internet computer has generated more fees than Optimism, Arbitrum, Avalanche, and Polygon in the last 30 days, and the fees month over month are up 5,800%. 5,800%, Kyle. I do want to uh, show this. This is the cycle burn rate for internet computer, and it, it looks like it is starting to trend up again. What is going on? Are we, uh, is something big in the pipelines? Are we missing something? Can you maybe expand on this a little bit? Yeah, I think we've talked about Bob.fun, so I won't go yeah. into details there. There's another um, uh, site called Burn um, that also is burning a lot of ICP. Um, and I do believe there's some other people who are kind of innovating on these ideas that 
it, they're in stealth now and it'll probably launch, uh, who knows when they'll launch, but um, that's one avenue of, of certainly cycle burn growth. Um, under that hood though, like those apps have kind of like, um, they've put a lot of like uh, uh, noise around what I consider to be the true signal, which is what is the growth of like the rest of the internet computer look like? Um, I do know I was looking at this data just yesterday. Um, September is is on pace to be uh, more than double the amount of cycle burn than August, even excluding the Bob dot fund and the burn. So oh, wow. I mean, just we're having exponential growth. It's being masked a little bit by Bob dot fund and burn growth, but um, it's just it's been awesome to see. And it really is like um, it's two things, right? It's more users using ICP apps and more apps being either built on ICP or um, again, a lot of with chain fusion, a lot of apps that are built on other chains are just building little components on ICP um, to augment their app to, you know, add data storage or to add, you know, connections into Bitcoin or Ethereum or to, you know, do AI as we, as we talked about um, all of these awesome things that ICP can be used. And so I, I'm, I think what we're basically experiencing is like, that adoption curve of the S curve, like we're really on that upswing, and I I would expect it to continue for the for the foreseeable future. Amazing, uh, Kyle. I want to end it with this. Um, we're entering Q4, right? And you know, a lot of people in crypto, myself included, got in to make money, right? So everyone's expecting a massive quarter four as far as price, but I don't want to talk about price. I want to talk about what is something people can look forward to in Q4 when it comes to internet computer, anything you guys are working on, uh, really focused on maybe yourself personally or the Divinity team, any, anything you can share with, with the people watching? Yeah, I mean, Dom has been hinting at this big AI um, product breakthrough. Um, that's still on the table. Um, I won't speak for him on when it's going to come out, but I, I know what it is and it's awesome. Okay. Um, Beyond that, uh, we should have, I know we're working in the background on our Solana integration, so that's that's moving forward. And um, I don't know if we'll have news in Q4 on that. I'll leave that up to the R&D team. Um, but other than that, I think, again, this the story of people using internet computer for really what it's intended for, which is novel use cases that um, transcend like the um, trade token use case for blockchain. Amazing. Uh, Kyle, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to doing this again. And to those of you watching, uh, comment what are your thoughts? What are you most excited about with the internet computer and what they're building? Uh, and so, Kyle, thank you again, my friend, and we'll see you next time. Appreciate it. Take care.